Hey guys, Atlas here again. Mere minutes after recording the Great Nature profile, so... Long time for you guys, short time for me. Anyway, uh, I have for you here a uh, premium Pale Moon deck profile. Um, Pale Moon is a deck that uh, can hit really, really fast, and thanks to the new Stride Redoubt Premium Collection and our Progenitor Dragon, you can kill first stride, or even before first stride, uh, rather easily. Um, so, yeah, let's get started. Um, our starter is Happiness Collector. So, um, she's a forerunner, and then GB1, when a card is called from your soul to rear guard, you can put her, put Happiness Collector in the soul to draw and then soul charge one. So, the reason you run this over the V starter is that you can spam this. <laughs> um, and, yeah, you maybe give up the, the extra card in hand, but Pale Moon was never much for defense anyway. So, this allows you to uh, have, like, a booster in the early game, and then in the later game, you can use it to kind of recoup all the, you know, aggression you, you, uh, you use to make a board. So, pretty awesome card. If you're playing against some of their other retire, like Kagro or Shadow Paladin, don't have to call it for Forerunner. Just keep it in there, call it out later, and then use it later. So, hooray. It can be used multiple ways. Uh, grade 3, you have four copies of Golden Beast Tamer. So, Grade 3, 12k, Excel Gift. Um, so, if you have five or more units during your turn, Vanguard included, so Van or Rear, uh, if you have five or more of those during your turn, your front row gets plus 3k. Um, that's not really what you're using it for. The other skill is uh, when she attacks, uh, you can counterblast one, put a card from your hand to your soul, and then call two cards from soul to rear guard. The main reason you're running this is for the Excel gift, and also for early game. Before, I was running Artillery Man for the Excel gift, and as like a decent-ish rear guard, but I realized I was using my counterblast for another thing most of the time, and Artillery Man is, uh... Yeah, Artillery Man's kind of bad, but... The the thing with her is that she allows you to uh, put up like a really solid rush in the early game. Even if you're playing against Force Clans, that 3k comes in handy, because with an 8k behind her, she's 23. There's your numbers. Um, and then the reason you're running four of her is because the Progenitor Dragon is a pretty damn solid stride on its own. So you want to run the most copies of this that you can. So yeah, for her, um, four copies of... Nightmare Doll Alice. So I guess this is the preferred ride, but really either or works, it doesn't matter. Um, so when you ride her Alice on Vanguard Circle, you can pick a worker ride. So that's the race down here, under the clan, right there. Uh, you can call a worker ride from your soul to rear guard, and it gets four, uh, 5k for the turn. Um, so this can include other copies of her, it can include any of the other Nightmare Doll cards in here. It can also include uh, Nitro Juggler, who is a worker ride for some reason, so that's neat. Um, and then our other skill, and the main reason you're using her, is that at the end of the battle she attacks uh, while on rear guard. You counter blast and soul blast, put her into soul, and then choose a not grade three card and call it to rear guard. So, uh, the idea is to take as much damage as you can and then use this and a certain other card to just win, because as long as you have counter blast you can keep uh, you know, you can keep doing attacks, and if you keep reusing the same Excel circle over and over again, they're gonna die, like, hard. So, hurry for her. Um, let's see, from there, you have one copy of Comicality Chimera. So, he is a uh, grade 3 with 12k. He does not have the Excel gift, which is unfortunate, but that's life, I guess. Uh, he, um... When when he attacks anything on rear guard, you can soul blast one, and then uh, choose a another rear guard and put it into your soul. And then if you do that, he gets plus five k for that battle. And then if you didn't counter charge this turn, you counter charge one. So the idea is that this allows you to a vacate your board for if you're going to be calling more things out of soul. But the main reason is to counter charge during battle phase so that you can extend your attacks as this deck. Kind of relies a lot on counterblast, and now that 
Gize is kind of out of the picture competitively. Um, I think this deck is, has like a much bigger chance to shine. So, uh, like him as a one of. Um, don't really need him as a two of because, uh, like, like the skill says, you can only do it once a turn. Oh, if only, right? Um, otherwise, I would run more copies of him. One copy of Tricky Assistant. So this is literally just for the Hanali matchup uh, on Vader Rear when uh, placed. You counterblast one, and then you can pick up to one rear guard on both sides of the field, and then put them into their respective owner's souls. And if it was on both sides that you picked, Tricky Assistant there gets plus 10k. And then if you ride on top of her, you call her a rear guard. So in the off chance that you have to ride her, she's not the worst thing in the world. But um, lack of an Excel gift sucks. The important thing is that you can call this mid-battle phase against something else that calls Hanali mid-battle phase, so you can get rid of it, or if they just put it out there for you to deal with. Um, if you're really that paranoid about it, you can uh, cut a copy of Golden Beast Tamer for another copy of Tricky Assistant, but I do not recommend it, but that is me, so. Let's see. Four copies of Nitro Juggler. 9k, when you ride or call him, you look at two cards from the top of your deck, one goes into your soul, one goes on the bottom of deck. So this is great in the early game because it lets you build up your soul. It's a worker roid, so you can call it out with uh, Nightmare Doll Alice. And uh, if your opponent kills it, what do you care? Still's already done. Um, I have it as a 4 of for the sake of consistency. Um, it just, it allows you to like really like build up your win condition early, and it's not GB, so. Super useful card, even though it doesn't look like it at a glance. Three copies of Flying Parison. So, much like Crayon Tiger, this was a very important card for a long time, but I found myself not needing it as much anymore. Um, GB1, when placed on rear, you can't, the Magia still, so when placed on rear, you can soul, use Soul Charge, then call something to the same column as him, and then at the end of the turn, the thing you call goes back in Soul. So this allows you to get soul. It also allows you to make a column out of one card. So let's say, you know, you go into a stride and then call this out. He makes his own column. Um, you can also sometimes, like, I'll put this in the back if I don't really have any good grade ones. And then if I have grade threes I want to call, I'll soul charge and then call the good attacker in front of it so that you can attack with it and then, you know, pair it in and the guy goes back to the end phase. Um, Sometimes I'll even call Tricky Assistant off of it, and then use Tricky Assistant to pull the Parison into Soul, so it, like, pays its own cost. So yeah, pretty solid card. Definitely a 3 of. I see a lot of lists running for it, but I don't think you need it that much. Two copies of Nightmare Gold Greenie. So this is what I was talking about with Alice. Uh, when she's placed on rear, um, you can put her in Soul, and then if you do, choose a card named Nightmare Doll Alice in Soul, call it to rear, and it gets 5k. So what does this mean? It means you attack with Alice, you counterblast Soul, last put it in Soul, call Ginny. Ginny immediately puts herself back in Soul and calls Alice back out with plus 5k. That means you have a loop going on, my friend. Um, this thing is really, really good. You don't need it except for that literal one scenario, but uh, that's why I have it at two, because it helps you ensure that you will find it. Um, and then the, like, you know, it's a decent turn two ride, something like that. Um, you don't really need it at three because you only need to do <laughs> you only need one copy of it to do the skill. It's not like you're gonna be doing popping off multiple Alice's at once. Uh, still pretty damn solid card and definitely a two of at the least. So yeah, one copy of Dancing Knife Dancer. So at the end of the end of your turn, if you have no face up damage, you can put it in Soul and counter charge one. I wish it was one or less face-up damage, so you could do it twice, in which case I would run two of. This is usually the last thing, like, if you're doing the Alice combo with Ginny, back and forth and back and forth. The last thing you're going to call out with Alice, like, once you've run out of Counter Blast, is going to be this dude. So you attack with him as your last attack, and then at the end of the turn you shove in Soul and get one damage back. So you can at least uh, start with something on the next turn. Um, it's also pretty good, like, if you go first, and then you go, all right, I'm gonna, like, use a bunch of Counter Blast with my Golden Beast Tamer and all that good stuff, you can call this off of it and do well. Um, but like I said, because it only works with only one face-up damage, one of the one copies kind of redundant. I had it at two for a while, and one of them just kind of ended up being Soul Blast fodder, 
so I'd rather use it for other things. Um, as well, there's another card in this deck that lets you basically search anything, so this the deck is super techy, which I like. I like decks that have a lot of flexibility in what they do. Um, one copy, <laughs> like, speaking of techy, one copy of Dancing Princess of the Night Sky. So, um, when you place her from hand, much like Nitro Juggler, you can counter blast Soul Blast and then call a card from Rear Guard, or from Soul to Rear Guard. Probably not going to do that that much, but, um, the other skill is when she's placed from Soul, she hits plus 3k. You're mostly going to be using it for that because it means that if you call it out on an Excel circle, it's hitting for 17 slash 22, which is numbers against most things. Um, mostly used for your early game. This is also a card, this is a tech slot through and through. So, you want to run another copy of Paradin? Go ahead, drop that. If you want to run another Stride Fodder, which we'll get to in a bit, yeah, sure, go for it. If you want to run a second Knife Dancer, <laughs> um, you're welcome to drop her for it. Um, hurry for tech slots. Alright, on to the green ones. Four copies of Midnight Bunny, the new one that I have in congratulations promos because I'm a whore. Anyway, uh, so 8k grade 1, 10k shield. When you boost with her, you soul charge for free. Good stuff. The other skill is that when she boosts an attack that hits, you can counter blast, put her in soul, and then call a non-grade 1 from your soul to rear guard circle. So this is great literally any time of the game. Uh, the on-hit pressure is really insane early because it helps you set up your soul and then you go, all right, I'm going to boost this Nitro Juggler for 17, you take it, I put it in, I call out Alice, I attack with Alice for 12, and then I suck it in, and then pull out Knife Dancer, I attack for, like, this is all while they're on grade 2, you can put on a lot of pressure early as well, she's a 10k shield, um, and like I said before, this deck doesn't do defense too well, so it's a, you know, a shining light in that kind of sense, but still, neat card. Um, three copies of Nightmare Doll Leslie, whoops. Nightmare Doll Leslie. So, her skill, on rear guard circle, uh, when Nightmare Doll Alice goes into your soul, you stand her. Pretty straightforward. Uh, she's a workeroid that you can call out with Alice. I will usually do it to the Excel circle just created by Alice, but the important thing is that this allows that whole little loop I was referring to before get a lot scarier, because you will go, all right, I attack with this for 17, then I do the Alice thing, and then she restands. Then I attack with her for 17 again. Then I attack with Alice, and then she stands again. Like, basically, for every counterblast that you have, it counts as one extra attack with the Alice combo. For every extra copy of this, that turns one counterblast into two attacks, or three, or four, or however many. Um, this is really especially deadly if you happen to put a crit on it. <laughs> um, and yeah, super solid card. Great first turn ride. Um, I had it at four for a while, but you see it often enough because you go through your deck pretty fast. So, sweet card. Um, this is a little weird. One copy of the new Purple Trapezist and two copies of the old, old Purple Trapezist. So, the new one is a 7k grade 1 with a uh, 10k shield, and the old one is a 6k grade 1 with 5k shield. So, the old one... Uh, the skill is when she's placed on rear, you, uh, you know, pick her, <laughs> choose another of your Pale Moon rear guards. How old is that? Um, put it into your soul, and then uh, you choose a card not named Purple Trapezist and call it to rear. So this means that if you, uh, like on your stride turn, call Paradin, and then Paradin calls this, you can refresh a column for free without doing anything. The new Purple Trapezist is that when she herself is put into soul, you can Soul Blast a card named Purple Trapezus to call something. That can include copies of the old Purple Trapezus. So it's a little odd. I know it's a little unorthodox, but I think it's kind of neat that you can go, all right, um, you know, I attack with a column of the new and the old Purple Trapezus for 13, and then I attack with my Harry, I pull in the old Purple Trapezus and call out it plus something else. Old Purple Trapezus sucks in New Purple Trapezus to call out something, and then old or New Purple Trapezus Soul Blast itself, which you can do that, and call another card out. So it allows you to extend your attacks in really weird, unorthodox ways. If you would like, you can always add another copy of either type of purple, perps, um, by dropping a Nightmare Doll Leslie. 
I am honestly considering that uh, for the for the shield and also to make that combo a little more consistent. Um, because like I said, new perps can soul blast old perps for the cost. So uh, it's super, super flexible and super fucking funny. So yeah. Neat still. All right, uh, two copies of the stride fodder. There may be 10 grade threes in the deck, but you still get a stride for stuff. So yeah, pretty solid. Um, if you go into the Progenitor Dragon, this just becomes, uh, you know, discard fodder for, you know, perfect guards. Or if you soul charge it, it becomes soul blast fodder. Pretty simple. On the triggers, you have two copies of the counter charge, soul charge heal, and then two copies of the V heal. So, <sighs> I think I take this philosophy in a lot of my decks, but you definitely want to be getting the power, and then when the counter charge, soul charge, Pale Moon runs out of counter blast pretty fast, so you kind of need that for the for the CC most of the time. Um, I would consider tipping the scales in favor of the CC heal, but I'm not really sure yet. I have the copies for it, um, but I do recommend you run at least two just for the sake of not running out of counter blasts against an opponent that's smart enough to, uh, you know, stall on you. For draw PGs. So unfortunately, Pale Moon doesn't really have any, uh, you know, grade one perfect guards that are worth running. Uh, the closest that comes to mind is Hoopmaster, who you can call a card from Soul to Rear and it gets intercept and you can intercept with it, but it costs a counter blast and we've already been over that problem. So draw PGs it is. Um, I don't find myself decking out as much as I do with something like Great Nature, ironically, even though that seems like something Pale Moon would have a problem with, but it's so fast that, uh, yeah, draw PGs are nice. You can also uh, call them out with one of the G guards. So yeah, neat stuff. Um, four copies of Exotic Jerker. Where are they getting these names for these crits? Because it seems like all the clans I play, they're like, hey, let's make them play the stupid ones. Exotic Jerker is the premium collection crit for Pale Moon. So when your Vanguard attacks, GB1, you shove her in soul, draw, your Vanguard gets 10k. Uh, she's 15k shield and gives 10k power like other V-series triggers. The important thing is that Pale Moon is literally the only clan in the game that you can reuse this skill with. So, uh, it is to your advantage to, uh, you know, you soul charge this by accident? Cool, I'll call it back out with a skill then attack with it on an Excel circle for 14, then attack with my Vanguard, suck it back in, draw more cards. Yeah, pretty solid freaking card. Um, and then also la uh, two more uh, V-Crits. So I had Fronts here for a while, um, but I ended up switching to Crits because the idea is to pressure the opponent with that little loop strategy going on, so getting them as close to five as possible as fast as you can is in your best interest. Um, so, yeah, I I need to go find my other copy of Poison Juggler so I can have one and one just to, you know, for the sake of screwing with people. And then lastly, I have two copies of Prankster Girl of Mirrorland. So, Stand Trigger. Weird, right? But the steal is GB1. When she's put into Soul, you put her back on top of your deck, search your deck for a card, and then put it into your Soul and shuffle. Obviously, you can't do her over and over. The important thing is that if you soul charge this, you can then search for literally any card, which means that you can set up your combos pretty quick. Um, this can include if you do this by, you know, putting it on an Excel circle and then sucking it in after. It still goes off. It's a very, very flexible card. If you would like, you can cut a crit trigger for a third copy of this. Um, but I find that most of the time when my Vanguard starts drive checking, everything's standing for the most part. So you don't really need the stand trigger part. You mostly use it for that skill, which is really fucking good. Um, so that's why I have it at two. All right, and then on to the strides. So starting off, we have the Progenitor Dragon, the Progenitor Dragon of Gloomy Dark uh, for Mido. So same copy as your Vanguard, and then when you do it, you counterblast one, and the opponent chooses a rear guard and retires it for every open circle that you have. And then if you retired three or more after you do that, you soul charge five and draw a card. 
Obviously, if the opponent has an empty board, there is no reason to go into this, because uh, even though if he is face-up in G-Zone, you can stride for free every turn, Pale Moon doesn't really, like, you know, I run 10 grade 3s and 2 stride fodder, you'll be fine. But the important part is that this allows you to, if you're playing against something like Shadow Paladin, spoiler alert for uh, one of our videos, and they, you know, make a board, you can just wipe that board in one fell swoop without really doing anything. Um, it allows you to, like, plus in card economy pretty fucking hard, depending on what you're playing against, and it allows you to get a draw and build up your soul for largely no cost. Um, I really like this thing, and it is definitely worth picking up, although I don't think the progenitor dragons are too expensive. Um, but yeah, for Pillman, definitely worth it. Two copies of Fancy Mighty Trade Dark Lord Princess. So our good friend Dark Side Princess has, uh, has graduated and become a lord, I guess. Anyway, um, so she's a G unit that, uh, at the end of the battle that she attacked, you turn a card in G zone face up, uh, and then choose a face up G unit with power and the magia ability, and then you stride it, and then call Dark Lord herself to rear guard. And then the thing you stride off of that gets stride minus two. So the reason it's worded like that is so you can't stride a G guard. Duh. But the important thing is that this allows you to get four drive checks with literally no cost whatsoever. It also allows you to get multiple uh, attacks. Like you attack with her, you assign crits to stuff. Then you call her to rear. Then you attack with her. Then you attack with Vanguard. And because when strides and rear guard are called over or retired, they immediately go back to G zone. This means that you can have a little more impunity with how you call your rear guards. So one of Pale Moon's biggest problems before the reboot was that you d just didn't have enough field to do what you wanted. Now you have Excel Gifts, and now you have this thing, which just gets out of the way for you, which is great. Um, I freaking love this thing. It's a very powerful stride. Uh, most of the time, you are just going to use it to stride the next thing that's coming up here you know, do it twice, they should be dead by then. But there are other ways you can, you know, do it. Um, it also means that because it, you, you turn anything face up and then choose a face up card, you can reuse the same stride twice. So that's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, uh, good card. Four copies of Master and Master Harry. So this was Pale Moon's saving grace back in Giera, and it's still the case here. Uh, when he attacks Vander, he counterblasts, turn a copy of him face up. Choose two of your rear guards, suck them in, call three cards from soul to rear guard, and then they get put in, uh, back in the soul at the end phase. So, because it says cards, it means you can take locks, assuming Link Joder becomes a thing again, and put them in soul, which means Blue Ball can suck it, because that's not unlocking them, that's putting them in soul. Yeah. Um, the other skill is that all of your units with the Magia ability get plus 3k for... Uh, every card in G-Zone with the Harry name, which you're not going to use that much. It is nice that when you call out Paradin with the skill, Paradin is now a 12k by default, which means it's hitting most vanguards. Um, but mostly, like, this allows you to, by default, let's say you have one card on rear guard circle when you go into Dark Lord. Then, so that's one attack. Dark Lord is two attacks, then calls herself. So, then Dark Lord on rear guard is three attacks, and then Harry is four attacks, sucks those two in, calls three things out. Um, five, six, that's seven attacks minimum. Minimum. And that's before, like, all the other shit you get to do. Uh, <laughs> we have a running joke on the Nexus at Night podcast. Go listen to that if you haven't already. Fuck it, I'm plugging myself, I don't care. Uh, we, ha we had, like, a running gag for a while that there was a guy who was like, I can make 12 attack Pale Moon, and I'm not gonna tell anybody. This was back in Giera when that wasn't really possible. Now it's totally possible! <laughs> um, I, uh, I sometimes like to fuck with people by bringing a 20-sided die and, like, turning it every time I do an attack just to be an asshole. Uh, don't do that at a tournament. You will likely get punched. But yeah, super good card. Run it for of. Yeah. Two copies of uh, Curtain Call Announcer Mephisto. So once per turn, turn any card in G-Zone face up, and then he gets red text. All of your units get plus 1k for every copy of Mephisto face up in G-Zone. And then also, after you do that, you choose, you can call something from Soul for every two cards in G-Zone with the Magia ability. 
So the main reason you're doing this is this is free. It does not need uh, the it does not need counterblast. So if you're being fucked with for whatever reason, you can use this to make a board without having to commit much. That's also where Periton comes in because he pulls something out with him. Um, and also, because it gives everything 1k, it means you're hitting force numbers for the most part. Your 9s become 10s, your 10, you know, your 12s become 13s. Um, one way you could do it, honestly, is like, if you just, if you kept flipping these over with Dark Lord and then striding Harry anyway, so then you have like the benefit for later. There's lots of fun stuff you can do. Uh, next up, you have one copy of Dragon Master 8 Harry. Yes, I got the text box this version because it looks better. Shut up. Anyway, so, uh, when, he, when he attacks Vanguard at GB3, you counterblast two, put one card in soul, call three things out. Then if you have five rear guards after you do that, your opponent chooses two of their rear guards and puts them in soul. So this is one of the few ways Pale Moon has control outside of Tricky Assistant. Um, you're probably never going to use this effect because you want to be saving your counterblast mostly for Nightmare Doll Alice, but it is a thing you can uh, do if your opponent has like a low board and you need to control it, or uh, if you have less of a board because Mastery Master Harry requires two to suck in, this only requires one. Um, it's also something you can just continue to, you know, reuse with Dark, uh, Dark Lord Princess over and over because he doesn't flip anything, so, hooray. Um, one copy of the GB8s. I haven't used this in literally months, but uh, when she attacks a Vanguard, you choose up to five cards from your soul, call them to rear. Uh, they get plus 5k and become an Abyss Dragons, so like they're race, much like Workeroid. Um, and then she gets plus 10, uh, you know, red text plus 10k for each Abyss Dragon on rear guard circle. It's a free card. Um, it allows you to make a board for free. They all become dragons for no reason, <laughs> and then uh, because you have Excel circles, that means like most of it's going to be you know front row attackers. It's not like you're going to be calling stuff to the back. That's not going to be able to do anything. So yeah, pretty solid GB8. You're probably never going to use it much. I've used it as flip fodder for uh, for Dark Lord before. G guards. You have two copies of uh, Wandering Dragon. So when you G guard with him, you soul charge, and then you can call something from. Uh, soul to guard circle. So typically what you want to call with this is either something with big shield or, most likely, a draw PG, because that can get around a lot of guard restrict stuff that's like, hey man, no sentinels from hand, and you're like, this isn't from hand, suck it. Um, so yeah, good stuff. Then you have one copy of uh, Fernval. So when you G-guard with him, check top three, put a card from one of those in soul, and then if it's grade one or higher that you put in there, he gets 5k shield. This is a way to selectively soul charge without really having to, uh, you know, deal with anything much. Uh, one copy of Maha. So, when you G-guard with her, if you have uh, a Vanguard with the Magi ability, you won't, because none of them do, you, uh, she, you, fuck me. Uh, she gets 5k till the end of the battle, and then you can uh, call a card from soul to rear, and then it goes back into the end phase. Never gonna happen. If you G-guard with her and your Vanguard doesn't have the Imagi ability, which it won't, uh, you Soul Charge 3. So I mostly just do that when it's like a weak attack and I need Soul. Um, it's also something that counts as a Magi card, which sets up Mephisto. So, hooray. Um, and then lastly, one copy of Coltard. So GB1, flip a uh, you know, G-guard face up. And then if you have a grade 0, 1, 2, and 3 in your Soul, he gets plus 15k shield. Uh, that's pretty easy to set up, and it's an easy way to get a lot of shield for free. So, yeah. That was the deck profile. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly had a good time uh, playing with it, which you guys either have seen or will see. So rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.